Hey guys, getting ready to uh, start the brine pre-wet or the striker spreader. Got my relay harness. Had to go to O'Reilly's for the harness. They were out of them at AutoZone. The AutoZone relay is an RL45. It's a four pin connector. Um, five pin connector, sorry. Five pin, five pin connector. The uh, O'Reilly part was a two P as in Paul, S as in Sam, one zero. That's uh, basically just simplifies life a little bit. So the uh, harness, you don't have to like, if you want to go cheaper, you can. Um, instead of putting, you know, butt connectors on here, you just pick up the harness and line her up and somehow it's gonna shove in there yeah so there then you got your relay harness so we're gonna get to work on putting this brine maker brine sprayer pre-wet kit on the western striker so stay tuned we'll get home get the salt spreader out of the back of the truck start working right, guys, we're uh, here in the shop excuse it's a little messy uh, try to get this film for you guys and upload it so you can get your uh, pre-wet systems going or your accessory lights going on your western plow products. Um, we're going to be running everything through the module that is on the plow. So you've got four uh, wires in here that come out of your module that are for your accessories, your vibrate, your strobe light, your pre-wet, and uh, accessory lights. So I'll go over the color codes on those. Um, pick up, uh, I, I'm going to give you the part numbers for the harness and the uh, uh, relay, which is required. If you try running any accessories just off these wires, you might fry your module. So it's not a good idea just to, you know, ground, a, you know, the negative to the chassis and then your positive to your uh, relay box, your module box, because you can end up find something expensive. I'm not sure how much this costs, but I don't plan on finding out. Um, so this is a RL45 relay. This is from AutoZone. Um, the relay that I used for the lights is a RL44. No difference whatsoever. There's just a, a fifth pin or a fourth pin or a fifth pin. Yeah, fifth pin. Um, the fifth pin doesn't get used. So Basically, I'm just going to cut the wire off on that. So, get into the nitty gritty. I'm going to show you how I have the light one wired, uh, kind of give you an overview of that, and then I'm going to dig into wiring this. This is going to be for my pre wet. Um, so, if you're just here for how to wire in the relay for lights or strobe lights, um, you can just watch through that part. I'm not going to include any of the uh, pre-wet stuff until later. Basically, once you make this harness and wire it in properly, it you can use it for any function. You could use the same harness for pre-wet, the same harness for strobe lights. All you're doing is putting a middleman, this, in between your lights or whatever device you're trying to run, and this module to take the load off it, uh, you know, setting your module. So. All right, so, I'm going to go over the light wiring that I have because it's already done. The relay is already wired in. Um, I can hit the accessory button and turn the lights on. I don't have the cab controller on, so obviously I can't do it right now. It's really nice to be able to run everything from the cab. Um, really handy, and it utilizes the system as it was intended for. Um, so coming out of your harness, um, you're going to have... Um, four ports that you use. So you're going to have four wires that you utilize. The wire that's in the harness that I'm not using in the O'Reilly version would be the peach pink colored wire because it's the barb that's in the middle. So that's the extra barb that's on the 45 relay. This one's a 44. No, I don't need the 45. So I know I can cut that one off and be pretty safe. I'm gonna leave it on there for now. So on the 44 and on the 45, basically the 
if you have it mounted like I do, the and you flip it upside down, the back spade is going to go to the let me pop this open here. Is going to go to the hot side of your distribution block here. So this is your hot side and your negative side down here. Excuse me. Um, two wires are going to go to this one. So you're going to have the back spade is going to go to it and this side spade, these two are both going to go to hot. So follow me on that. If it's mounted up here like this, when you plug your harness in, whatever color coded harness you get, doesn't matter if it's green, red, purple, blue, doesn't matter. This back one and this side one, which are number 30 and number 36, get that right? Yeah, 30 and 36 are going to both go to hot on your block here. So you're going to take this nut off, put in a uh, eyelet solder, get them connected in, and uh, we'll go from there. So let me get those two wired in, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I'm back. I'm wiring this in. Um, right now, I have my two positive wires into a uh, O connector, a, a ring connector for my positive side. So you're gonna have two wires going to your hot side. On mine, with the um, relay sitting as it will, the right side is the blue wire with, uh, with the O'Reilly harness that I listed at the beginning of the video. It's the blue wire. The blue wire on mine for the use of a pre-wet system, according to Western, goes to the orange accessory wire. So you're going to want to use the orange one for pre-wet. The um, gray one is your accessory lights that I have mounted. White will be uh, strobe kit. Blue is your vibrator. So when you're doing this, make sure you spend a couple extra bucks. Use heat shrink crimps or solder crimps. Just use something that's going to protect it because this module has to be expensive. Um, I could see it being five, six hundred bucks or more for this module. You don't want something grounding out and causing a, a function problem. Uh, take the time to do it because you know as well as I do, snow contractors can't afford downtime. That's why I'm working on a 2020 truck right now is because I just can't afford the downtime. So we're going to go ahead and use the heat gun, get this uh, shrunk up here, move on to the next step. Okay, next we are going to remove the positive nut on the uh, positive terminal. So we can go ahead and get our uh, two wires that go to the positive side put in. Get that off. That is a half inch socket. Let's go ahead and get that done. Let's see how I want to feed this. I'm going to keep everything organized, but I'm going to come in from the side on this one. It's got different routes you can take, but I can't come in from the bottom because I fear I will mess up my... Oh, there's a lock washer on there. Pull that off first. That's a good idea. put this terminal under my light kit because it's got a little bit more play in the pre-wet one. So got my two terminals on there. Again, that's you got two wires running to your positive side. Put your lock washer back on. Put your nut back on. You don't need to tighten the crap out of it. It just needs to be 
snug, so it's not going to back off. It does have a lock washer on there for a reason. So now we are left with, again, let me go over this again. So as the relay is sitting as you would mount it, because I'm going to have it mounted like that, the prong that's on the front, so you can see looking from the bottom, this one would be the front. This is going to ultimately be my hot wire for anything that I would want to hook up. Again, I'm doing a pre-wet right now, but if you were doing the light kit or the vibrator or the strobe lights, the top closest to the front riding of the relay, that's going to ultimately end up your hot wire. Ignore the peach wire. It's not used. I've got it cut and taped off. The right side looking at your relay, right side is going to go to the corresponding uh, light or uh, jumper wire from the module. The other two that are left, which would be the left side and the back, are both going to the hot side of your distribution block. So. Now I just need to zip tie this in. Um, they, I don't know what Western has for a bracket or something, but they're a little bit prettier when you order the kit, but uh, this'll do for me. It's not going anywhere. Make sure everything's you know, clean and not disorderly. You wanna zip tie everything up. Don't have any rub points or pinch points. You definitely don't want anything pinching on the lid of the box when it comes down. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this in. I'm gonna trim this wire. I'm going to go ahead and build a jumper wire from my negative side and then we're going to test it to make sure I'm worth my salt. No pun intended for a snowplow contractor. Alright, so now I have my red wire which will end up going to my or my 12 volt sprayer for my pre-wet. Um, like I said, this is universal. Red wire could go to positive side of your lights if you want to. All I'm showing you right now is just how you wire up a relay to the module so you don't burn it up. So I've gone through everything, all the steps to hooking up the uh, positive terminal, my camera will focus, um, and hooking up the wire to the module. I've gone through all that. Now I need to create a ground wire for my power unit. So if you're doing lights, you would be grounding. You can see a little um, half inch nut right there. That's the ground side. So you've got ground and hot both on the same block. They're separated. They're covered by that little box you just pop off. So I'm gonna pop that off. I have a eyelet connector that is heat shrunk. I'm gonna get that bolted on there and uh, be right back with you. Then I will have a successful positive and negative wire that are controlled by the onboard module. All right, here we are, everything's wired in. Um, I'm gonna go over it real quick with you. The yellow wire on the O'Reilly kit ultimately ended up being my hot wire, which it is running um, into a protective casing that I picked up. Uh, you can pick this stuff up, I think, at AutoZone, O'Reilly's. Um, cut a small slit in your grommet. There's um, one on this side that you can use. Uh, this side has a ton of them you can use if you want to put your stuff coming out of there, like my lights. This one is for my lights, so everything's in protective coating. So I do recommend the O'Reilly harness, this harness. It has longer wires than the one from AutoZone had. The AutoZone one, I actually had to extend the wire to reach uh, the hot side. So I would actually go with the O'Reilly harness and you can probably pick up the uh, um, RL44 or the RL45 at O'Reilly's. It doesn't matter which one you get. Just remember you're not using that fifth spade. So my hot wire's here, my ground wire's here. My ground wire is running to this stud. This block, this black block, block that the cap goes on, 
has little channels where you can go off to the side or you can go straight up or you can go this way. Don't run the wire across because then if it rubs, you're gonna have a jump. Uh, so my, hot, my ground wire for my pre-wet system is right here. My ground wire for my, my rear backup accessory lights is right here. So I have it plugged into the truck. I have the box on in the front. Uh, everything comes out of this tube. I don't have my pre-wet done yet, and that's going to be in the next video. So if you guys want to uh, see how the pre, see how I do a homemade pre-wet kit, uh, you can look for that video here in the next week. It is a, oh, I don't know, it's 34 degrees right now, and uh, it was I think about 16 last night. So I'm trying to get everything wrapped up. Already had to spread salt a couple times this year, but uh, I want to get this pre-wet going. So. To test this, I have it ran through the loom, which I just have running to a light so you guys can see that the system works. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're hooking to it. I put a butt connector over the hot side because I just twisted them together uh, for you guys. Put a butt connector over it to protect the wires. I don't want any arcing here. Uh, but I ran my loom long enough that I can run to that second girt right there where I started drilling holes. I had to order new drill bits that are stainless steel uh, step bits. So I'm going to kick on the spreader and let's see if it works. So when you have a relay properly wired in, you will start seeing, you'll start seeing your different lights pop up. So before I had a relay hooked to the module in the back, none of these top lights were on, it was just dark. But now they work as they should. Like I said before, in the other video of the review of the Western Striker Spreader, I'm gonna turn my pre-wet on right now. Well, that doesn't mean that my, oh, it does mean my light's on. Oh, okay. Well, I was wrong about that. I apologize. If you turn on the pre-wet button, it will turn on before the spreader is actually activated. I was under the assumption that the pre-wet would only kick on when the spreader was on. That's weird. Which I didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. Western should change that. Because there's no sense in spraying pre-wet if you're uh, not spinning salt. So, hmm. I don't know. If you guys have the actual kit and yours is different, let me know. Uh, but I can see the lights on. I have the spinner on low. So I'm turning spinner and my light is on. So I'm getting power through my relay. So that's how it's wired. A little disappointed that that kicked on. The light kicked on, meaning I'm gonna have to remember to kill my spinner and my pre-wet every time so huh. all right well thanks for watching guys if you want to see how i'm going to do my pre-wet kit stay tuned subscribe i'll get a video of that posted soon i'm going to start working on it now um get everything wrapped up and ready for the season have a good one bye